Hello, uh, welcome to the uh, second lecture of Structural Analysis 1. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we are going to see uh, idealization of structures, threads and responses. If you remember the last class, that was our end, end slide, right? We discussed uh, that uh, uh, structural analysis is, is essentially uh, a step to understand the behavior of structure when they are subjected to any kind of threat. So, this is the flow um, called structural analysis. Now, what we are going to see in this lecture is what are the different kinds of threat we may have, what are the different kinds of structure uh, uh, we have and of, of course, what are the responses we are looking for. Okay. Now, uh, you see nature is uh, very at the end of the day what irrespective of any engineering discipline what we want to study is we want to we want to we want to study uh, the nature right nature is governed by certain laws certain rules we want to understand those rules and then with that understanding we try to find out the solution of our uh, engineering problems okay now nature when we do that, that process uh, is that, that 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 is also a step, right? We don't, uh, for instance, uh, for instance, you see, if you take any, if you take any physical system, this physical system could be anything. It could be a structure. It could be, a, it could be. Um, I'll give you some examples of any physical of some physical system. Now, this physical system is very complicated, very complex. So, dealing with the physical system exactly the way it is, it's very difficult. So, what we do is instead of instead of taking the physical system as it is, we take an idealized physical system. We take an idea, simplified model of this physical process, okay, and then try to analyze this simplified process. Now this idealization should be idealization of this physical system must be as close as possible to this physical system now again this idealization depends on what exactly we are uh, looking for this uh, looking for this analysis okay if we are if your if your requirement is different uh, then we can uh, our method of idealization or the idealized model of, of same physical system will be different now, once we have the idealized system, then we try to represent this behavior of this system through some mathematical model. Uh, this mathematical model could be in the form of integral equation, maybe in the form of differential or algebraic equation, but those equations must represent the idealized physical process. Okay. Now, this mathematical, once we have this mathematical model ready, and then what we do is we solve this mathematical model. So, this is the, this, this process is true not only for structural analysis, this process is true for any analysis irrespective of the discipline. Any problem we solve or try to solve, we generally approach, we generally follow the similar approach. First, idealization of the system, then equations, model of this equation, model representing that idealized system and then solution of the model. Just to make it clear, let me let me give you an example. Suppose I want to I want to study if I if 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 if, if a ball is dropped from a certain height, what I want to study is uh, what would be the velocity how the velocity um, how the velocity change over time as it as it falls, and when it reaches the ground, what will be the velocity uh, of that object? Okay, or any particular at any particular time, what would be the distance traveled by this object? So, this is the physical process. Now, what is the idealized system? I, this is the idealized system of the process. I, we, we have this is the ball with mass m and the, it is falling under gravity g. Now, at 
some point at initial point y0 and the final when it reaches the ground y is equal to yf. At t is equal to 0, you can have if it is not free fall, if you give some initial velocity, then there could be some initial velocity as well. Now, this is the idealized system of this idealized model of this physical process. Now, you see what are the simplification we have made when we when we write the when we say that this is the this represent this physical process we have it is based on that representation is based on certain assumptions as far as this problem is concerned here the one of the major assumption is there is a no drag and coriolis effect there, there is no drag force from the air um, and since there is no drag force then what happens if you uh, if you take if you drop a steel ball or a feather they will reach um, uh, they will reach um, at the same time and then there will be no coriolis effect okay now this physical system is based on these assumptions similarly you take any system when you when you when you when you idealize it that idealization has to be based on certain assumptions and assumptions of any process is very important because you know it is the assumption which are the limitations of any model so when you uh, when you simplify a system when you are working with a model you must understand what are the assumptions behind that model and understanding of that assumption will help you to know what would be the limitation of this model because wherever the assumptions are not valid the model cannot be applied so in this case this is the limitation if if you if for a problem the drag force and coriolis effect is important then you cannot really have this you need to consider this in your model now once you have idealized the system next next step is the representation of the system through some equation okay now this can be represented by this simple equation now this this is the governing equation and this equation is subjected to subjected to this condition these initial conditions okay now once this mathematical this model is with us the next step is to solve this model solve this equation with uh, with, with this initial condition and finally solution of this equation is this so you see this is the this is the solution of this model now how accurate this solution is for this physical process it depends on assumption at various stages various steps because you have some assumption from physical system to idealized system and because of that assumption you are slightly deviating slightly deviating with from the physical process now when you from the simplified model when you represent a mathematical model uh, here also this mathematical model also based on certain assumptions and that assumptions will add to this deviation and finally when you solve this mathematical model there are many many cases you will see that uh, closed form solution may not be possible and you need to go for some approximate solution and even in structural analysis towards the end, end of this course we will see that um, uh, how the, some will introduce some of the approximation approximate method for solving structure so during this approximation also some um, um, there, there some uh, the assumptions uh, contribute uh, to this deviation. So, you cannot, uh, you must not take any solution for granted. When you have a solution, please check the physical process and understand what are the assumptions at every steps. And if those assumptions are applicable uh, for your case, then your solution is valid then you can go with the solution but if you see that these assumptions are not applicable not valid uh, for the case you are dealing with then you cannot take this uh, solution for granted and that is true not only for structural analysis that is true for any any analysis um, okay now um, uh, what we do is uh, in this uh, so analysis essentially means uh, what we do is in this course is is this process okay so uh, today we will see how the physical system can be idealized what are the idealization of physical system and then next course next lecture on will only concentrate on this part and every problem will start with the simplified model the idealized model of the actual physical process okay so for today we will discuss from this step to this step and then next 
and, and the rest of the courses will be concentrating on this part. We will always start with this idealized system. Okay. Now, um, you see uh, uh, there are three components involved here, one is the structure itself and then another one is the threat and uh, the responses. So, when I say that you need to idealize the system, you need to idealize everything, you need to idealize the threat, you need to idealize the structure and you need to idealize the responses as well. Uh, now, uh, let us see how the structure can be idealized. Okay. Now, you see this is an example, this is uh, this is a tall chimney, okay. this is the actual structure. Now, this is the physical process and this is the simplified model of this physical process. Now, what are the assumptions here? Now, the assumption here is if we see the this chimney is very long, the cross section of this chimney is very small as compared to the length of the chimney. So, if it is such, then this chimney can be treated as one dimension, it is a line. Okay. Now, this chimney is fixed to the ground and this line which is an idealization of this chimney, it is fixed to the ground. So, here two things are idealized, one is the chimney itself, it is simplified as a one dimensional line element and the support um, that is uh, idealized as we will discuss more on support in details, but this is a fixed support. Okay. It is this line is fixed to the ground. Now, suppose the similar kind of structure, but, uh, but you have um, it is an elevated water tank, you know. Now, up to this it is very slender similar to chimney, the cross section is very small as compared to the uh, length of the uh, length of this part of the structure, but then after this part there is this, this there, there is a huge this tank. Okay. Now, uh, the weight of this tank is huge, so what this uh, structure can be idealized as uh, you have a, a, a line element which is an idealization or idealization of this and then which is attached to mass, mass of the entire thing. So, this is the idealization of this structure. Okay. Now, let us see uh, some more, uh, this is a truss. Okay. Uh, now, um, this is the real structure, I uh, will show you a model of truss, so that uh, you can better understand the different, uh, different joints and, uh, and, uh, and the members how the assembly, uh, diff assembly of different parts of this different components of the structure. Now, this is the real structure and this is idealized as this. Now, again if you look at every member separately, they are uh, the one dimension is very small as compared to the length of this member. So, every member is modeled as line element okay. and this is essentially, this is essentially the collection of some, some uh, um, some slender member, some member having having larger one length is larger as compared to other two. This is idealized as collection of uh, of 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 some one dimensional element, one dimensional member. Okay. Now again, the supports are it is an idealization of the support. Okay. Now when we talk about structural analysis, the analysis is needs to be performed on this idealized uh, structure, not on this. Okay. And therefore, we have to be very careful from this step to this step, the, your idealized or simplified structure must be as close uh, as possible to the actual structure. Now again take another example, this is building frame and which has columns, slabs, then shear walls, we will discuss uh, details about columns, slabs and shear walls and this is the idealized uh, idealization of this structure. You see uh, the columns, uh, columns are modeled as vertical lines, then the beams are modeled as the horizontal uh, lines here and the shear walls are modeled as, um, uh, mo modeled as plates okay. uh, and then uh, another important thing you can see here, the slabs are not modeled here, we will we will see later that uh, in many cases we really do not need to model the slab, when the whatever load you have on the slab that can be uh, by just directly distribute on the, on the on the floor. But in many cases where um, you depending on the response you are looking for, you may have to model the slab as well. Uh, so, this is an idealization of this structure, again it is very important when you 
when you do this step from actual structure to idealized, idealized structure, you have to be very, very careful and the analysis needs to be performed on this idealized structures. Okay. Now, uh, there are mainly in, 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 in this course, um, we will have two kinds of structure we will talk about, one is uh, truss and one is, um, one is frame. Uh, how structurally they are different, uh, stresses and frame, uh, we will discuss in detail. Um, now, this is some example of truss, you know, the truss is, is, is a railway bridge, um, um, uh, this is a transmission tower um, and then um, this is you might have seen that uh, during any function or any, um, this is these are supporting arrangements where you can keep your uh, lights or any other, uh, any other uh, orchestra system that you may need. So, this is also a truss, okay. But important thing here is, you see all these structures are three dimensional structure. In fact, we are living in a three dimensional space, right. So, all structure is essentially three dimensional structure. But what we do here is, we will idealize them as two dimensional structure and perform the analysis on those two dimensional, uh, two dimensional structure. Um, but it does not, it, it, it is, but that is not our restriction. The reason why we perform analysis on two dimensional structure, because through two dimensional structure, we can demonstrate the concept, we can learn the concept and the similar, once we learn the concept, then the similar concept can be extended to any three dimensional structures, okay. Now, you see, uh, uh, now how this idealization, this is the actual structure, okay. Now, you see the actual structure made of, this is one, uh, one, one system, if you take this is one system and then another system, the replica of this system and these two systems are connected through some members, okay. Now, see this is one system and then similar, similar truss you have there this one and then these two trusses are connected through cross members. What we do is now we demonstrate our concept, the structural analysis concept through this, okay. So, this is a space truss, the space because it is in three dimensional and this is a two dimensional idealization of this space truss, okay. And this is called plane truss and we will perform analysis on this plane truss, okay. Uh, if time permits later, we will see how the concept you learn in two dimensional uh, problem can be extended to three dimensional problem. Now, these are um, frame, structurally they are different from trusses and how they are different from trusses, we will discuss that in, uh, in details, okay. Now, um, uh, again, if you if you if you take this frame, consider this frame. This is the this uh, this this is a space frame. Okay. Now again, you see this frame essentially. This if you take this is one one representative uh, representative element of this frame, and then you have mirror image of the several such elements, and all those elements are connected together. Okay. So this is one component, and this component you repeat those component, and then connect those components together, and you you have the space frame. What we do now is we'll instead of considering this as a space frame, we take just one element of the space frame and perform analysis on this uh, on 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 this frame. So this is a space frame. This is plane frame. Again, this is not our restriction. This we will be doing that just um, to demonstrate the concept. Once we learn the concept of structural analysis, the, we will see how those concepts can be extended to a three dimensional problem, okay. And uh, these frames are, these, these frames are supported uh, at, the, at the ground, fixed at the ground and this is the idealization of the support, okay. So, essentially what we do is uh, uh, that structure. Um, two kinds of structure we will uh, discuss here. One is called truss, one is called frame. For the time being, you, you take the term truss and frame for granted. We will discuss detail how the trusses and frames are different and structure are different. Uh, but in this case, we will be, we'll be considering two different kinds of structure, truss and frame and that too, plain truss and plain frame. But again, uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is not the limitation will extend once we learn the concept, we can extend it to three dimensional problem as well. Now, this was the idealization of frame. Uh, 
Now, let us see what are the idealization of threats. You know, when a structure is subjected to any, any structure, uh, uh, subjected to actual environment, it is um, uh, exposed to actual environment, it is subjected to different kinds of load. What I am going to do is on this slide is, uh, I am going to show you different, uh, some of the loads that we consider during, um, during structural analysis. Uh, the first load is called dead load, which is the self weight of the structure itself. Okay, and the then life load. Life load means the loads which are live, right? Here, for instance, here, if you take a building, then you have the self weight of the building is the dead load. Now, other than the self weight of the building, you have the load from the occupants of the building, load from the furniture. If you take a bridge, then um, in, in addition to the self weight of the bridge, the vehicle moving over this bridge, passenger moving over the tree, bridge, this vehicle and passenger, they exert some load on the bridge. Those loads are live loads. Okay. So, they are, these two dead load and live load are the most common type of load that we consider uh, in any structural analysis and design. Now, then we have earthquake load, earthquake uh, you all are familiar with earthquake. Uh, now, that also needs to be considered uh, if you are making a structure in an area which is prone to earthquake. Uh, then we can have wind load, especially if very for very tall structure, we do consider wind load, wind, has, wind may have very significant effect on the structure. Then we have earth pressure, if you take a retaining wall uh, which retain soil then the soil can exert some pressure on this on this retaining wall um, that also uh, need to be considered while uh, analyzing retaining wall and designing retaining wall then we can have water pressure as well if you take any dam um, um, then the the water um, can exert significant uh, pressure on the dam that pressure needs to be considered um, then you have snow load that also depends on the location. If you find in an area that's, that, that, that uh, the deposition of the accumulation of the snow on the roof of a structure may produce the increase the uh, in, uh, increase the load on the structure and that load also needs to be considered while, while analyzing and designing of those kinds of structures. We can have blast load again. Those these kind of loads are very special load. I mean, if if you are in, if you are designing very important structure which may be subjected to impact or blast, that also need to be considered. Then um, offshore structures. Yes, most of the offshore structures are exposed to almost all all offshore structures are uh, exposed to wave and current load. And actually, this is the one most significant um, threat on offshore structures. So when you are designing offshore structure, we need to consider the load from wave and current. So, in other than all these loads, uh, um, apart from all these loads, there are few other loads which are important and needs to be considered. Um, Again, whether or not you consider that load, that depends on the purpose of the structure. The settlement, foundation settlement, uh, foundation settlement, uh, effect of foundation settlement we will discuss in detail later. That is why you, you put a, you put a star mark right now here. Then thermal loads due to change of temperature, uh, your uh, temperature may, may affect expansion and contraction, then that expansion may or contraction may may may, um, may induce some, some force, some load on the structure that needs to be considered. If you think that that is, an, uh, that is a significant uh, uh, part of your threat, machine vibration if you are making a structure where, um, uh, for a machine, then vibration for the machine needs to be considered. Then construction load, during construction also you can have different kinds of loads uh, that need to be considered, corrosion effect, creep. Uh, so, um, you can google it or you can see any books to understand what is corrosion or what is creep, but these are some loads that needs also to be considered. Okay. So, these are some of the threats that needs to be considered, um, uh, that, that needs to be considered when you design or analyze a structure. Now, you see, now in this slide, what I gave you, I gave you a different kinds of thread, but it is not necessary that you consider everything when you, uh, when you analyze a particular structure. Okay. These are the common threads that you can have, but, uh, but uh, depending on the structure, you need to consider, you, you, need to ch you need to choose the kind of threads. If you see the dead load, live loads are more important than any other loads, then you may ignore all other loads. For instance, uh, for instance, uh, suppose the choice of different loads and their combination depend on uh, structure type 
and mm -hmm. purpose and location of the base structure. For instance, you see this is the uh, India uh, um, earthquake zone of India and this map shows you that um, which are the places which are prone to earthquake. I mean these are these are the places which are where the occurrence of earthquake the probability of having earthquake is more compared to the lighter part here. Now naturally if, if you are constructing if you are building a, if you are building a structure here you need to consider earthquake load but when you are constructing a building here that earthquake load may not be that uh, that significant. So whether or not earthquake load to be considered that again that needs to be de that needs to be decided based on the location. Now suppose this is one example in the many hilly area that um, rolling stone uh, is, is a very is a very common problem. Okay. So, what happens your stone rolls down from the hill and hit the structure which can cause damage to the structure. Now if you are making your structure in those areas then the impact from this rolling stone need to be considered. So, in a nutshell what I want the point what I want to make is we have a different kinds of three different kinds of load but what are the loads to be considered that depends on uh, the location of the structure, purpose of the structure, importance of the structure and based on this you need to consider the threat. Okay. Now uh, next is the idealization of threat. Um, what we have done, uh, we have discussed so far is different, different threat, right. Uh, now let us see how the threats can be idealized. For instance, for self-load, take uh, this structure, this is a cantilever, um, uh, cantilever part of the structure. Now you see this structure can be idealized as this that we discussed how the structure can be idealized. Now the self weight, the this portion of the structure has some self weight and the self weight is distributed over the entire length and this self weight can be idealized as uniformly distributed load on the structure. Okay. So this line is the idealization of the structure and this uh, arrow you can see that is the uniformly distributed load which is representation of the dead load of the structure. Similarly. You, if it is earthquake load, it can be shown that earthquake load can be uh, can be idealized as as horizontal load at different stories. Okay, if you move from ground, the, the this this load in this magnitude of the load increases. So what happens here? Here the this this grid structure that you can see that is the idealization of your actual structure, and then these these arrow which has the horizontal forces on the structure. This is the idealization of the earthquake load. Okay. So, this problem is now uh, idealized as this. Similarly, the earth pressure if you take, uh, this is a retaining wall which is subject to earth pressure. Now, it can be idealized as this. Uh, this line, the vertical line you can see that is the idealization of the retaining wall and this uh, this triangle distribution that is the idealization of the earth pressure on the retaining wall. Okay. So, again this is the, uh, okay. so, so one observation from this example is any kind of load whether it is dead load, earthquake load or earth pressure or live load any can, can any load can be idealized as some concentrated or distributed forces or concentrated and distributed moments. Okay. So now uh, whatever threat we consider uh, instead of considering the threat as it is we translate that threat into uh, into into concentrated or distributed forces or translate the threat into concentrated and distributed moments and apply those apply those forces on the structure analyze it now next the response uh, of the structure you see um, there are uh, we will see in your design course there are three important uh, consideration for consideration for design one is whatever structure you make your structure uh, needs to be safe means the structure must not collapse under the action of load so safety is the first requirement okay and and second requirement is um, uh, serviceability serviceability says that uh, uh, one of the serviceability is the no excessive deflection the structure may not collapse uh, but the deflection of the structure is uh, is very high so that the purpose of the structure is not served there are many other serviceability requirement as well for instance uh, the durability means that if the structure must not have excessive cracking you see this structure is still safe but because of this cracking the purpose for which the structure was made it is it is not being served again overall stability of the structure still the structure is not collapsed but it is not stable 
again the fire um, uh, on the structure that is also another serviceability requirement but in this course we will not consider the durability cracking and all other these serviceability uh, requirement what we do is we'll concentrate on the serviceability uh, related to deflection okay and last but not least is the economy uh, you want your structure to be economical okay so essentially uh, the design of a structure uh, is an optimization uh, where we come up uh, come up come up a design which is safe and serviceable and uh, economical as well now then what are the responses we will be looking for in this course two major responses one is the responses related to safety and responses related to serviceability economy is not something that we'll, we are going to discuss in this course now responses related to safety means what would be the internal forces in structural component you know every structural component has certain strength if the if the stress or force in the structural component is more than its strength then the structural component fails so it is very important to understand what are the internal forces in any structural component so our first response that will be uh, will be determining from structural analysis is internal forces in various structural components and the second response will be uh, the deflection means uh, the structure has to be serviceable uh, so uh, deflection is the serviceability criteria that uh, we will be considering in this course. So, our response will be internal forces and uh, deflection. So, just in an, uh, quickly summarize, so this is the slide we started with today and then uh, we discussed the idealization of stru threat structure and responses. Let us summarize this. Threat is essentially you have different kinds of threat but we have seen that all the threats can be translated into concentrated and distributed forces and moment so for us the threat will be now concentrated distributed forces and moments on the structure the structure is plane truss and plane frame we'll discuss the concept with plane uh, structure but that same concept can be extended to um, uh, space truss and space frame as well and then uh, responses responses are two responses one is related to safety one is serviceability responses will be internal forces internal forces could be axial force shear force and moment we will have more discussion on this in the next class and then the deflection and what we will do is um, you have already uh, had uh, mechanics course and probably some um, uh, strength of material or solid mechanics course uh, where you probably had some idea about bending and shear force in beam what we do is um, uh, we'll we'll review those concepts in first module itself because some of these are the concepts will be useful uh, in uh, rest of the classes okay so uh, but you know no amount of uh, no amount of lecture uh, can compensate uh, reading from books reading from book is very very important and uh, uh, you must have a copy of these books um, uh, these are the some references uh, reference books that will be um, um, will be considering in this course and many examples that will solve here uh, will be taken from these books either solved or some exercise problems okay okay then uh, here we stop next lecture what you do is uh, um, next lecture we'll discuss the degrees of freedom uh, suppose and support reactions static equilibrium equations determinate and indeterminate structures and we'll see how the equilibrium equation can be used to determine support reactions okay see you next class thank you